again. You're giving me a lot of nice to see you here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm so happy to see Madam after 25 years. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. It was nice that you have taken the link and you are inside. I <laughs> जी साहब कुछ टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम लग रहा है गुड इवनिंग ऋषि सर दिस इज केवी रॉफ फ्रॉम मैसूर सर ओ डॉक्टर राव नाइस टू सी यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर डॉक्टर मिश्रा टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू आवर ऑडियंस एंड टू मेक दिस टू टेक दिस प्रोग्राम फॉरवर्ड विथ हिज इंट्रोडक्शन रिमार्क्स So I think Mr. Ji, there is some particular problems that Mr. Ji is saying. Yes, sir. Mr. Ji, can you hear us? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Okay. And Mr. Ma'am, Mr. Sir, your uh, mic is all again muted, sir. Mr. Sir, your mouth, ma, yeah, yeah, it's audible now, sir. Yeah. Even you can hear me, no? Yes, uh, sir. It's, your sound bit. is yeah. Your sound is very uh, low, sir. I think if you can remove the uh, earphone, I think we will be better to hear. Yeah, we will be able to hear you better. How is it okay? Yeah, a little closer to the phone, sir. I think we will be better. Yes, yeah, sir. I think yeah, you're audible. Yeah. Sorry, madam. There is a uh, problem with the um, connection and all. You, you, it was delayed. Uh, and I know you are you were preparing preparing yourself from three thirty, and some program was going on in my our Macau, so the concerned man could not contact you, and our VC sir has also come. I think. with his permission we can start the program yes yes we start this program mr ji i will request sir uh, can speak uh, some other people are calling so the our directors are not available sir can you keep your phone near nearby your face so that the voice can be louder sir and uh, he retired as secretary education government of india and he has done lot of works all over the country with many books and many articles all over the world her her books and articles are very famous i think vc sir if you have the copy of that uh, you can little bit introduce her that would be very nice dr mishra we have to hear you a little louder okay you see upon phone leta now now madam we can hear you can hear very faint a little more slow i don't know why it is coming so slow Okay, let me start this program. Mr. Ji, you uh, uh, fix your system and then uh, join us. Uh, good afternoon to all our uh, panelists and to all our participants. Today uh, we are going to uh, organize one programs, uh, lect online lectures on uh, rogues among the ruins, and that uh, that is a book authored by Mrs. Ochola Molik, and we are fortunate to have Mrs. Molik amongst us. she uh, is a prolific writer she uh, earlier in her career career she was holding the positions of uh, she was uh, basically a, a civil servant holding the positions of uh, director general of uh, archaeological survey of india uh, probably after this uh, demolition of babri masjid 
so far uh, the, the information which I gathered. And uh, afterwards, she has, she has written a number of books. And today, we will be uh, uh, eagerly waiting to listen regarding the context of these books, the content of these books, and the, uh, the, the approach uh, uh, and the thought process uh, which uh, prompted us for writing this book. With us today is also Dr. Rao, and uh, we'll have also interaction with Dr. Rao to uh, enrich this session. So without wasting for the time, because already we are 15 minutes past uh, four, four o'clock and uh, our, panel, our, our participants are waiting uh, to listen to uh, Mrs. Uh, Ochala Mowlik. And my request to uh, Mrs. Mowlik uh, to start the session and afterwards, Dr. Mishra, he can join, he can give more inputs and to make the session uh, more lively. So I believe that uh, today, it will be a great, you know, this uh, uh, interaction session for our panelists and, uh, and and all of us will be immensely benefited for our interaction with Mrs. Molik, Dr. Rao, Dr. Mishra, and the others who are present over here. So with this, I would like to conclude and I'm requesting Mrs. Molik to uh, make her presentations or deliberations for our participants who are present over here to listen to you. Thank you, Mrs. Pauli. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Maitra and uh, Vice Chancellor for inviting me for this session to speak about my book and uh, what is the reason I wrote it and what is the inspiration. First of all, I'd like to make a disclaimer, so to speak, and many people ask me if uh, I have, uh, it is um, you know, a criticism of the bureaucracy and the ASI. It is nothing of the kind. And if I may just delve into the background, um, that my own background, that my father being in the United Nations and Foreign Service, uh, me and my sister, we grew up abroad and I studied in London University. So with all our qualification and knowing Russian and French, it would have been a natural choice to stay in the West, work there, as many of our young people are doing today. But uh, my father, who belonged to that generation of Indians, my grandfather also, that they believed in serving the country. And um, this service meant that you had to go there, work there in whichever field you chose, and um, so I decided, I was rather advised by my parents to join the uh, Indian Administrative Service. And as a further step towards their dream of integration of India, um, I, my parents chose, rather my father chose, that I should work in my source state, as it was known then. And this was rather unusual because the then Chief Secretary of West Bengal, who was a friend of my father, said she's the first Bengali girl who has come after 10 years. So let her work in West Bengal. And uh, so I came to work in Karnataka and um, served in various capacities, but um, saw the bureaucracy at work. And we came with, uh, I think all of us who joined the service in, when we joined in, in the late 60s, we had a very different perception of what service would be like. And it was much simpler then, and uh, certainly <clears throat> more idealistic. And it was a time of, Panditji uh, just passed away. So it was Ms. Lal Bahadur Shastri's time in Dira Gandhi and all that. And the program began for rebuilding India. Poverty elevation was a big concern. Uh, there was the 20 point program, which uh, attacked the root of the problem in the crucial sectors, health, education, uh, industrial development, rural development. And all of us, our generation were caught up in this. And uh, some people have said that, you know, nothing much was done in the last 60 years, which I think is absolutely wrong because when India became independent, 
we were the third poorest country in the world. The British Raj has made many improvements in law and order, in Western type education, but they hadn't really improved India economically. In fact, it was very, very poor, underdeveloped. And a foreign ruler is not expected to look after its colonial subjects. Nowhere has it happened, though there were many other benefits. So this development began taking place in a very large scale when I was a young officer. And uh, in Karnataka, holding jobs like food secretary or uh, transport secretary, we didn't really see the power politics, which comes much later. And it was when I went to the Archaeological Survey of India that I began to see a very different picture to what I had imagined. Now, those of you who have been in touch with the Archaeological Survey and other um, organizations like the National Museum, Indian Museum, the Asiatic Society, will know the pioneering work done by Indologists. It began with Sir William Jones and followed by so many other scholars, German scholars, a Russian scholar called uh, Gerasim Lebediev. Then Warren Hastings set up the Asiatic Society with the specific purpose of finding information about Indian civilization, ancient Indian civilization, collecting manuscripts. And William Jones headed this in 1784. And uh, so Warren Hastings was so reviled in history books for his political acts, he did something very great. And he drew scholars, all the British scholars of the East India Company to work on Indian Sanskrit texts, uh, the epics, and of which was led by the great Sir William Jones. Now, my husband was so inspired by this. He was also a civil servant, IS. And this book, can we show it on the screen? And this book, Dialogue of Civilization, William Jones and the Orientalist, paved the way for the understanding of India, Indian civilization, India's culture, literature, the epics. And Sir William Jones was so dedicated to the work that even while he was dying, of some undiagnosed disease, which was probably a tumor, a deadly tumor in his abdomen. He went on working on the text. I think the last thing he was working on was Manusmriti. So these were the people who delved into Indian civilization. And then Sir Alexander, Sir Alexander um, went to General Alexander Cunningham, went to see some of the ruins. He was not an archeologist or historian or even a civil servant. He was a military engineer. And Alexander Cunningham saw the ruins on his journeys. And he was the one who was inspired to establish the Archaeological Survey of India. It was a great step forward. And we should be proud as Indians, though we owe it to the British, that India was first organization in the world which had this. There were the ancient, ancient heritage and others in Europe, but nothing on the scale of the Archaeological Survey of India. And Cunningham did it, his, his successors did it, various um, uh, branches were set up, excavation, antiquities, publications, research. And I've seen how these various branches worked in the ASI with great productivity and knowledge and erudition. Then the structure of the SI expanded, there were the various circles. First it was the four presidencies, then they, after independence, they were put in, uh, each state had a circle. Some of them were very fine, like the Madras circle and the Agra circle and Calcutta, of course. And here great work began. And we had great archeologists, uh, the great archaeologists like um, Sir John Marshall. It was during John Marshall's time that uh, the Mahanjodaro and Harappa excavations began. It was, of course, first originally founded by Dr. Rakhaldash Banerjee, on which 
of whom Dr. P.K. Mishra has written a book of the enormous work he did. And Sir John Marshall took credit for it, but the fact is the, these two great Indus Valley civilization sites were discovered, which as uh, many archeologists said, that it pushed the frontiers of Indian history back by some 3000 years. Unfortunately, the Indus Valley script has not been yet deciphered. Uh, I have asked some of my epigraphic epigraphists in the ASI why this was not so, and they've told me that there was no bicodal, bicodal text by which they could do as they have done in Sumeria and Babylonian and Egyptian hieroglyphics. That's a great loss, and I would have thought that in 70 years of independence, somebody should have worked on this. So when I joined the ASI, it was a, with a great sense of admiration for this organization and the people there and my enthusiasm, I caught on, I tried to uh, revitalize the secretary culture then was a very gifted man, Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh. And he gave me a great praise when he said that she has started revitalizing um, uh, a great organization which was falling asleep. And we sent people for training abroad, learn latest uh, restoration, conservation methods, uh, epigraphy. So this is an organization which should have premier importance. Unfortunately, I was speaking to one of the people in the university now. I learned that many of the posts have not been filled up and, the, and which is necessary because when I was there, there were 5,000 monuments, odd monuments, which came under the SI. Now there must be many more and of which a large number of UNESCO heritage sites uh, are ours. Now to preserve this ancient civilization, modern, medieval, you need enormous efficiency you need funds, you need technical skill. And all that is there in ASI. Uh, but I also noticed a certain amount of cynicism which came in. Uh, there were some people, who, which I've tried to show in my book, that's why I called it Rogues Among Rooms. There were some officials who used this very strategic position to further their own ends. There were people who had no PhD degrees, they conferred PhDs on themselves. There are people who had access to very valuable antiquities. They have uh, let it go abroad with connivance or what. And the most uh, grievous uh, difficulty and unpardonable in a way was the lack of excavation reports for which I had a lot of problems with the former director generals. Not that I asked them to uh, send it, it was when the Babri Masjid demolition took place that the Prime Minister's office wanted to know where is the excavation report for the Ramayana site. And I had to tell him that there are no reports. So then Prime Minister's office, Home Ministry all asked me to write to the Director Generals to get the excavation report. This is not possible because sites like Kalibangan and Mathura and Burzaum they had been excavated years ago and they had been excavated, they had been put back without reports, which a great archeologist of the director general of the SI, Samotima Wheeler, and he, when he heard of it, he said, it's an unpardonable sin, unforgivable sin to excavate a site, disturb the remains, and then not write about it because you've really lost all the information there. And this was a setback, was a great drawback of the SI DGs not to have written this. And uh, as, as, as far as I was there, we tried to get people to write, but time has passed. And once you've disturbed a site, it's difficult to write about it. That is a, it was a loss to the SI and which uh, is irretrievable loss because nobody can go back and do it. So seeing the, the negative aspects of it. So I, I felt very sad as a civil servant. I'm not an archeologist, but I did history and um, international law, but having been exposed to this great organization 
and seeing what was being done in other countries. I lived in Italy with my parents. There they treasure their heritage. It is am amazing what they do, partly because, and because of that, Italy is one of its greatest uh, export earner is tourism and mainly cultural tourism because you go to any part of Italy, no doubt it's a much smaller country, but it's just covered with heritage sites from ancient time, ancient Romans to medieval to modern times. And India, which has a much older history, many more uh, sites and monuments could have done this, but uh, we didn't have the staff, we didn't have the, uh, we were not given adequate funds. So this was a great handicap to work with, but sometimes this can be surmounted. And the thing is, when uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi wanted to help Cambodia, what they call cultural diplomacy, she wanted to be a friend of Cambodia, which was necessary for us at that time to have the friendship of these Far Eastern nations as a kind of bulwark against China. Uh, the SI and the foreign ministry uh, did a joint collaboration to restore the monuments of Angkor Wat. And you may, many of you will know that it's a great site. It's the largest Hindu temple, not in India, but in Cambodia. It's a massive temple and a massive site. And the Archaeological Survey of India worked seven years there. And when I saw, I came midway, and when I saw the photographs of what it was under French rule, monuments, pillars, galleries, tangled in the forest, and what our people did was miraculous, especially under Dr. Narsimaya, who is no more great archeologist and restoration. And he himself became a great favorite of the Cambodian government. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the archeological survey has the power and the capacity and the skill inherited over many centuries to do this kind of work. And, uh, Many other countries tried to join in, but they didn't have the competence. Japan, Poland, even France, who ruled Cambodia for 150 years, they did nothing for uh, sites in Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos. Whereas the British did a great deal in India on the sites. So this is where I, among when I say robes among the ruins, I've tried to show the, the darker side where people who could have done so much, where the, there's a group of people called the Sapatis, and one of the officers in the Madras circle told me that they make uh, replicas of statues. And sometimes these statues are taken away and replaced and the originals are sold abroad. Antiquity trading is very, very flourishing in India and with very important people involved, in which I had to deal with them and they gave me a very rough time in the highest, highest positions in the country. And they were trying to get uh, monument, artifacts, sculptures taken from museums, trying to get them regularized. It was really criminal activity. So when you take on battle with powerful people and uh, lawless people, uh, you run into trouble. And this is what happened in ASI. So this is a minor part of the book. I have, somebody asked me, who is this person you have depicted in the book, part one of the book, Julius Norton. I have based it somewhat on Sir Mortimer Wheeler, whom I had met as a little girl in London when uh, he came to meet my father and he asked permission to do the further excavation in Indus Valley sites. And he said, we'll work in collaboration with Pakistan and India and show that it was a grand unitary civilization. He was not allowed to, which is a great pity. And he went to Pakistan and wrote a book and showed the grandeur of Manjadaro Harappa, which we should have actually been the inheritors of. So this is the part one of the book. And part two of the book is about the civil service. And from uh, what I saw as a young officer of my generation uh, to the cynicism which set in. And it, it would be the uh, IS, 
the police service, the forest service, all these services, the postal service, they did a great deal for the development of India. And anybody who tries to deny it or uh, denigrate it would be doing a great disservice to all the people who worked. Uh, India was, as I said, a very poor country when we gained independence. And the entire bureaucratic framework of India with all these services joined together to aid the development of India in many sectors, in industries, rural development, education, health, engineering, so many, so many education institutes were set up. And the pristine attitude we had, the atmosphere, where it was only important to work and get rewards by just recognition. If you were told we have done a job well, that was enough recognition. And naturally, promotion came in the uh, in government service as a matter of course. You didn't buy for it or compete for it. And then over the years, I saw that uh, other considerations came in. How to get ahead by pleasing those who are senior to you, those who are powerful. And this takes, uh, this corrodes the morale of the people. And I've used several examples. And uh, while professing to have great ideals, using poverty as a way of uh, furthering their own career, using help, some important sectors to do it. So this was, it probably happens in many countries, in India is not there. There are those who do want to get ahead and without too many ethical considerations, but this takes a toll finally on the country. And there are parallel with these people, there are of course dedicated people, <clears throat> which I've tried to show in my second part of my novel, those who stand up for their ideals, those who have done certain things and when they're questioned, as uh, one of our senior officers was questioned, he did something uh, to curb the population, and he was questioned before the Shah Commission. He said, no, I did it for these reasons and I stand by it. And he became a hero to all of us that he wasn't going to out to, to the new regime and condemn those who had been his seniors. There were many idealistic people like that. There are people who said, you tamper with the files, you write a wrong note. There were people who didn't do it. And they were sidelined, marginalized, but then that's the price sometimes for standing by your ideals. So those reading the book will see both sides. You see, it's, it's like the full moon. And our bureaucracy began like that, the country. And then gradually other considerations of progress, power, prosperity came in. So like clouds over the dark moon, the shadows come in. It is only one aspect uh, of the scenario. The much greater aspect is the great work done and which is still being done by people in many, in the air side, in the bureaucracy, in the forest, education, health sectors. So um, anyway, it's also a little humorous. So I hope the people who read it will enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, madam. Now, Dr. Misra, could you join? Your microphone is working. Sir, please switch on your mic, sir. Sir, can you hear me there? Yeah, we can hear you, uh, but voice uh, you know, is coming is low. at a very low level. Low level, I don't know. My phone is fully charged. I don't know why it is getting like this. Just now we uh, listened from uh, Mr. Sachala Mouli. Now uh, amongst us, Dr. Rao is present. Dr. Rao, can you, uh, you know this, uh, uh, put something uh, for uh, in this discussion uh, uh, regarding uh, this? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mouli already presented uh, you know, this, the, uh, the, the story of this uh, for for which. Uh, uh, which gave him a, an inspiration for gave, gave, her, gave her an inspiration for writing this book. But um, uh, would you like to add something on it, Dr. Rao? Uh, Dr. 
डॉक्टर राव सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक सर हेलो यस यस गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीबॉडी मैडम मचलो मौलिक हेलो मैडम मचलो मौलिक सर वुड फर्स्ट एज एडिशनल डायरेक्टर जनरल एंड लेटर एज डायरेक्टर जनरल एज रिवाइटलाइज द एएसआई हर टेन्यूर इन एएसआई वाज अ गोल्डन पीरियड शी मैनेजड टू गेट मोर फंड्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया फॉर टेकिंग अप मेजर कंजर्वेशन वर्क्स एंड a landscaping around the centrally protected monuments in india and for scientific chemical preservation of monuments and museum objects for publication of indian Arche india Ar indian archaeology review a many technical teams were deputed to different countries like cambodia for example for collaboration with the local archaeological departments there for uh, conserving the monuments and sculptures there indian museologists have established a museum in angola some rare and important stone sculptures from different museums in india have been loaned to different several countries for temporary exhibitions there after following all security and other measures madam is remembered for two counts in goa sir i was a deputy supporting archaeologist in western region goa headquarters at vella goa uh, visited him when i was there the madam wanted to see uh, that uh, 16 feet bronze statue of louis kamais a portuguese poet sir this sculpture was in the center of the garden in the church complex in old goa sir uh, it was uh, it was installed there during portuguese government after the liberation of goa in 1961 some freedom fighters of goa have bombed it actually they they warned the sa to remove it from the garden but sa has not accepted their proposal and when one went midnight they bombed the sculpture and it became so many pieces sir our archaeologists have collected all these pieces and and kept them in a store in the museum sir and madam when we visited when she visited the goa museum uh, 1985 sir she wanted to see the this uh, damaged sculpture i got the storeroom opened and show me took the madam to the storeroom and she asked me rao whether is it possible to again reinstall in the garden uh, madam the same problem may arise uh, then madam suggested why don't you exhibit in the museum itself so the ground floor of the museum which was a originally a convent of the church it was converted as a museum after goa liberation the height of the ground floor is around 60 20 feet sir whereas the sculpture is 16 feet so madam suggested when visitor vis uh, enter the museum this sculpture should be seen first so what i did sir i i got all the pieces chemically cleaned them and then erected small pedestal about 3 uh, feet 2 uh, feet pedestal cement pedestal and then erected on the pedestal so what we did sir there was a threatening call from some freedom fighter in goa hmm. one day he phoned to me are you mr rao I said, "Yeah, I am Mr. Kaviro. Uh, Mr. Rao, I came to know that we are going to install the Kamoi statue inside the museum. Yes, sir. It's a government of India's uh, proposal. I have to carry out it. No, no, no. I, in the meanwhile, I asked him, 'May I know who is speaking?' He said, 'I am a freedom fighter. May I know your good name?' No, no, not necessary. Then he said, 'I will threaten me. How you? I will see. You will exhibit in the museum. Then I also shouted, 'I will also see how you will object it.'" so then out of fear sir i went to chief minister wilfred de souza was the chief minister he was coming to old goa for prayers on sunday sir so i know him very well also so when i sent a slip to his chamber immediately he called me then i told this problem sir uh, i i need some security so immediately he phoned to dsp ponda and ponda asked the uh, rivankar sub inspector sub inspector in raibari raibandar sir so some uh, a policeman in mufti were sent around me uh, just to see what is going on what whether any people are uh, doing anything there so what i did sir friday is our museum holiday thursday evening i i, I started the work there was a uh, tiger metal sheet workshop which is run by a malayali uh, engineer sir so i requested him i i contacted him he was coming to old goa for morning walk and he became my friend 
One day I went to his shop and asked him whether it is possible to erect this sculpture. He said, yes, definitely it is, it is possible. Then we started the work on the Thursday evening, sir. Friday is museum closed. We closed the museum main gate and started the work from Thursday night itself. And next day morning, the pedestal was ready. Cement pedestal was ready, sir. And then from Friday morning, we started uh, uh, night itself. We mended all the pieces together. And from Friday morning itself, we, we, we erected the statue. By Friday evening, it was ready, sir. So tourists, when they visited the museum on Saturday morning, they were stunned actually to see this because Thursday it was not there and Sunday morning, Saturday morning it was there. And one more, uh, one more incident, madam, uh, madam, madam visited again after, after I think after one year, uh, the Fort Agua, the Taj Hotel group Fort Agua, the, they invited madam for a tea, cup of tea. So madam asked me also to accompany her. So I also went there, sir, in the um, big hall, Madam uh, saw one huge panel of painting showing old Goa and Goa during 1505. Then immediately she called me, Rao, okay, is it possible to exhibit in the museum? Yeah, madam, it is possible. Uh, then I, I took one uh, professional photographer to the hotel next day and took five, six snaps and he got it uh, uh, pieced together and it has become a six, I think it is 10 feet by six feet long painting, sir. And at the same size, we also made a photograph. Uh, Madam, uh, next day, Madam has shown me the place where it is to be exhibited. People must see it. If, if you exhibit in a gallery, people may not see. But uh, at the steps leading to the first floor, if you exhibit, there is a lot of space there. You please exhibit there. Then I exhibited there, sir, and then sent the photograph to Madam. Madam, uh, Madam was very happy. Sir, these two incidents, uh, Goa people ever remember Madam Sir. So, uh, yeah, Madam, thanks. Even at this age, Madam is very, very uh, enthusiastic. Uh, and she, she, she wrote a number of books, Sir. The present book gives a number of uh, uh, aspects of Indian archaeology. So, I take this opportunity to thank you so, to Madam and to the uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and Dr. Misraji for giving me a chance to, to just to speak to all of you. Thank you, Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ra, for, for sharing a nice story. So maybe this, uh, this inputs can, uh, you know, this can, you can, uh, Madam can use this input to write your uh, future novel further. With a can, suitable I just, title. can I just say something to Mr. Rao? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I want to thank Mr. Rao, Dr. Rao, because I had forgotten you so many episodes like this. Yes, In yes. fact, I, when I went back to Delhi, there was a complaint lodged against me that she is reviving, why is she uh, reviving colonial figures? I said, this is not colonial. This is the history of India and this is the history of Goa. And Louis de Camus was the greatest poet of Portugal. And in his great poem, The Lusiads, he has shown the journey of Portugal to India. So this is cross-cultural history and don't be chauvinistic about it. So Mr. Madhavrav Sindhya was then the minister. He said, Achala, you've made a lot of problems for me. But I think this is what history is. And I'm so glad with your help and the other people, we could enrich the Goa Museum. And we shouldn't think of them as foreign elements. Louis Kamersh was a very important part of Indo-Portuguese history. Thank you for reviving those memories, Dr. Rao. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Thank you. Dr. Mishra, now uh, is it clear from your end? Uh, yeah, I think now I'm audible. I yeah, yeah. If you permit me, I would just ask a very uh, touchy question from madam. If she replies me, we. Aapka awaaz tik se nahi aare hai. Awaaz tik nahi aare, sir. Aabhi aare hai. Ye kiska Ye Dr. Rao ka kya? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. No, Dr. Dr. Mishra, Mishra, sir, please keep your mobile in front of your voice so that it can be louder. Otherwise, you may be a bit louder, sir. Um, sir, between um, Mishra, sir, is joining, I would like to ask ma'am one question. Ma'am, um, when you were in ASI, what were the 
as ace i have so many branches it is one of the most diverse uh, administrative uh, wings we can see like there's conservation there's underwater archaeology there's there about 10 uh, there about 10 branches yeah there's there's so many branches ma'am which one did you find was the most challenging to uh, work on or uh, what was your take on each branches well the most interesting was antiquities because the gamut of antiquities sculptures from 2000 bc to 1900 is mind boggling i don't think any other country except perhaps babylon iraq and syria and egypt of course egypt is even longer and uh, that was and it was the most dangerous because everybody's eyes were there and we had very polite very great socialite ladies who had cocktail parties and who were roaming around all these places see what they could pick up by you know various influence antiquity section has to be very very um, you know guarded because that is the most that is lucrative and what i found equally interesting was the old publications from the time of william jones and what dr rao in goa museum the old portuguese documents it's amazing how they've kept in asiatic society we have the a uh, handwritten letter of warren hastings to the board of governors of east india company you won't believe what he asked for that east india company board of directors should pay for the transla- english translation of the bhagavad gita by charles wilkins and because of this great imperialist who was also a great admirer of indian civilization and you know the recommendation he wrote this will warm the heart of the bjp he wrote the bhagavad gita is the greatest text of religious literature in the whole world and such was the magnanimity and the scholarship of the british in the year 1784 can you imagine they said yes we fund the whole translation commission and charles wilkins had a room in the imperial belvedere or in his king's house where he translated this great work of i won't say hinduism i would say indian civilization so that was the publications was a great center conservation i was interested as a non technical person and there were some very good conservation people uh they were called conservation assistant <laughs> assistant cs and they used to take me when they were doing it and they did one major work the transplantation of a temple a buddhist site from in gang uh, in konda from the krishna valley when it when the dam was being built they transplanted this whole site and put it on a hill across the river yes, arjun konda ma'am hmm? yes. nagarjuni konda yes the Nagar- site name is nagarjuni and konda there and it is amazing that they could do such a work uh buddhist era uh gems artifacts were there so every aspect of uh, si is so and the photo photo library my husband when he was working on this book on the uh, william jones and his company he used to sit in the si photo library to take pictures and the library in shasti bhavan these are treasure troves i hope they're looking after it as the repository of indian culture is them during our uh, institute day also we used to see that uh, plates they have beautiful plates of old monuments yes. they have a large collection of it like uh, photographic plates that are like priceless now and this great uh, tibetologist who was a hungarian by birth chomodi korosh he has left behind fabulous tibetan scripts translated into english from tibetan and he was the first tibetologist after which there was professor tuchi and others so it's a, you know it's a, a treasure trove the si and all its offices sure um is mishram sir audible i think he has he's been disconnected i think the doctor mistra got disconnected yeah. however uh, we had a nice you know this experience of listening to mrs molik dr rao 
and this was a very very you know this interesting session uh, we uh, came to know about many things many things which happens uh, behind you know this uh, which is apparent uh, and which is visible and behind that uh, what are the different facts and what are the different you know these uh, factors which uh, play a crucial role in determining many things so uh, my, our uh, best wishes for the grand success of this book mrs Thank Tony. You. and uh, uh, and uh, uh, we wish a very very you know this uh, long life and a prolific uh, writing career for you further already you have contributed uh, you know these several art, uh, books to uh, the literary awards and in your future uh, we are expecting you know this more writings from uh, from you and uh, dr rao also uh, you have uh, you know this so many you know these experiences so why you are not uh, on this writing to, uh, you know this uh, compiling all these experiences in the form of books. you should try also yeah <laughs> i'll okay. try sir i'll try sir because you know, all your people with archaeology you have so many experiences varied and checkered and beautiful experiences all these uh, you, you know this uh, uh, qualify enough to uh, capture in the form of novels Mm. maybe you know some uh, imaginary part imaginary part is required for uh, blending it with uh, facts with, uh, with fictions to make it you know these are true uh, literary novels mm. but everything depends on practice you can take uh, guidance from mrs mohanik valuable in sir i am 81 now i am only only 81 uh, this is <laughs> it's only a number uh, so You are, you are very agile and very fit now till at this at this age so uh, we wish that you live longer thank you sir thank you and uh, and uh, and uh, dr misra uh, for for last time can you can you correct further we have come to an end of this session i think sir has a mic problem sir yes he has a mic problem it happens then eh? so with this let us conclude this session so uh, uh, thank you uh, mrs molik for you sparing much. your valuable time amongst us Not for sharing sure. your experiences in near future we we, we uh, expect you to uh, again among us for sharing more experiences Certainly. dr rao dr rao will be will be expecting you also among us and thank uh, you sir thank you uh, mrs uh, mr boss onuja boss and dr misra they will be in touch with you we have uh, uh, there were you know the, the only last years we have uh, got, uh, our own we created our own heritage cell and through this cell we are planning to undertake a numbers of activities particularly uh, heritage restoration and preservation which is not coming under the ambit of asi there are lots of you know this uh, uh, heritage uh, buildings and uh, the which are standing at the city we will focus from uh, first from the city from the west, uh, state of west bengal and from city of kolkata we have so many you know this uh, heritage buildings which are not being taken care of uh, by uh, asi and as, as well as uh, by the government so we are trying to uh, form a document uh, uh, to uh, to uh, convince the government to support all this activity and we are trying to form a task force in this regard we are expecting your support valued support in our endeavor this endeavor and uh, and i uh, always will be we will be in touch with you we are very soon we will be we will be having our own you know this heritage cell portal and uh, I, i do not know when it will be ready this boss can you so can you uh, indicate to when this portal of your heritage cell will functional is it functional already or it is yet to be functional sir we have a launch date but there are some uh, like mean the technical things that we wanted to like yeah. make it better okay. so you yeah, fix all these technical are, things and then and then yeah. again uh, make a form you know this formal announcement for launching this portal and there we can invite mrs mohli dr rao further and uh, yes. where you know this in this portal we can have you know this more content like review of uh, the books uh, authored by mrs mohli and some you know this blog writings from uh, dr rao and all these things which to make this portal uh, more lively more you know this uh, useful for our uh researchers for our learning, learning community so with this let us uh, conclude this session thank you once again for joining us thank you all the participants thank you thank you wish you a very very you know, this safe safe life and uh, stay sir, safe always thank you sir i had the privilege to work in azaridwari palace for 10 days sir yeah yeah my colleague asit pandopajay was sent to iran by our director general so i was when i was working in nagarjuna kunda museum 
I was asked to hold the charge of uh, Azhar Dwari Palace to receive Governor uh, uh, Usse, uh, has, uh, forgotten his name, sir. He's from Nurul West Hassan. Bengal. Nurul Hassan. Sir? Ah, Nurul, Nurul Hassan, Hassan, sir. Nurul Hassan. So I went one week ahead and then got all the uh, uh, galleries and the premises cleaned. And then uh, Dr. Biswas brought him, brought the governor to the museum, sir. Uh, he was extremely happy to see the museum in that good condition, sir. Uh, I, our museum branch headquarters was at Calcutta, sir. I visited okay. Calcutta several times, sir, when I was working in uh, museum's branch. Uh, sir, okay. once there was a problem, sir, Portuguese governor, Portuguese education minister visited Goa Museum and somehow he was impressed with my display there, with the, with the display, not my display, sir, with the display of the museum. So he invited me to Portugal for a one month study tour of museums and monuments, sir. Okay. So at that time, there was a problem from the directorate. Luckily, three, four days after Madam visited Goa, then I, I put forth this problem to Madam. Madam said, no, 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 you get the uh, no objection certificate typed, I'll sign here itself. So she signed there itself, sir. So I could go to Portugal and see some of the museums, major museums in Portuguese, like uh, uh, so, so, uh, uh, Porto, then uh, Coimbra, and then capital of Portugal. And then I imitated some of the museums in my old Goa, sir, after returning there. So I, I, I remembered again, I want to thank Madam for giving me a chance to, to go to Portugal to study the museum, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me a chance okay. again to speak. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Mrs. Moli, any last word from you? No, I just want to thank you. And it was, okay. uh, thank Dr. Mishra could have added to it. Yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, we nice missed Dr. Thing. Mishra, but uh, nothing doing today. There is some serious technical problem at his end. So let us conclude and uh, we'll be meeting soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.